Well, our first guest has suggested using gold as an inflation hedge for years. Jim Grant is with us, friend of the show, editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer, our economics editor, Michael McKee, not wanting to miss out on the fun of talking about gold and inflation as well. Jim, we'll start with you. What does this mean that gold has, in fact, entered a bear market? Does it signal a crisis? Well, I think the only thing it, it truly uh, means is that people do hate this stuff. Uh, the rest of it is surmised. Now, uh, there's a distinction to be drawn between uh, the panic in which the, uh, the only cause is really the structure of the marketplace and a crash in which the collapsing asset uh, class portends something about the future. Uh, 1987, the stocks crashed down, what, what 25 percent or so in one day. Um, it signified nothing except that the market was poorly structured, especially with respect to portfolio insurance. The bond market crashed in 1994 but still intact was a long-term decline in interest rates. It seems to me that, uh, uh, that uh, what is intact at the moment is the determination of central banks to print their way out of trouble, which is terrifically bullish for gold over the long term. So I remain bullish though chagrined. Okay, <laughs> bullish though chagrined. Michael, how do you see this as fitting in with what we've all been talking about, the central banks doing these kind of unprecedented help packages and basically, as Jim just said, uh, printing money. Well, the latest economic fundamentals suggest that the economy is still weak. The Fed is going to remain in the game. And even those who were talking about scaling back on QE, doing some tapering, aren't talking about it until the middle of the year or later. So it doesn't seem like there's a real connection between that and what's happening to the gold price right now, nor does it seem to be a connection to inflation, because at this point, inflation is relatively stable. We're likely to see in the CPI tomorrow a drop driven by oil prices, but that's been very volatile. If you take oil prices out, inflation's been based basically stable over the last year or so, whereas gold prices have not. They've been coming down since October. Yeah, Deirdre, I would say that gold is not so much a hedge against inflation as it is against monetary disorder. I know you've uh, called it not quite the fear trade before you said it's the fatigue trade. Well, so, you know, it's, 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 it seems to me it's an investment in historical destiny, the destiny of, of money spending central banks to debase those currencies. So what we have today is uh, are, are, are poorly capitalized and poorly managed and cartelized uh, mega financial institutions uh, the world over. We have in China a regime that is creating credit at the annual rate of 47 percent, and we have in Japan a central bank that has announced that it will create yen at the equivalent of, in GDP terms, of like $190 billion a month if it were the United States. We do $85 billion a month. They are doing the equivalent in their economy of 190. And in this backdrop, it seems to me uh, that to be bearish on gold, you know, it's, it might be the fact the trade. It might be the trade. But, well, to, be, to, be, but to be bearish on you really have to believe that the central bankers are for once, for once, going to figure it out and do something in time. But your argument would make more sense if gold prices were crashing up at this kind of rate. They're going down. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of fear, certainly among institutional investors, was it, was that it, there is this monetary disorder out there. Well, mon uh, the institutional investing community was utterly sanguine in the summer of 2007. Um, you know, as Mr. Morgan himself said, Michael, uh, markets fluctuate. And this is for the gold bull. It's uh, vexing and trying and dispirit. I felt so much smarter and richer last week than I do this week, Deirdre. <laughs> All so, right. Well, <laughs> we're going to time your appearance better, Jim. But I want to ask, I mean, because you mentioned China, you mentioned Asia, and a lot of people, at least if you were on Twitter or you were blogging, you saw a lot of people when gold first started to drop, Michael, talking about the fact that China's growth came in a little bit under what was expected, but it's still 7.7% growth. It's still 7.7% growth, and really it's within the range of what people were expecting. It's a new normal growth rate there. We're not going to see the double digits. But gold doesn't have anything to do with the rate of growth in China. It may have something to do with the rate of credit creation, but right now China is not creating the kind of reserves that changed currency values that led to people holding ah, more gold. Ah, but the reserves are reaccelerating to the upside. So China. But they is, have it, though. The, the they, reserves at this point are, 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 are staying flat. It's true. Yeah. Well, it's true that we don't have an exceptionally clear read, do we, out of the economic data that comes out of China? No, um, nor do the Chinese, except the ones who make it up. Okay. Well, fair enough. Make them up. Make them da up. Data are plural. So you still say, listen, gold is still an inflation hedge, and one day this will come. Well, it, it is a hedge against the seeming inevitability, to me, the inevitability of the collapse of what my, one might call the PhD standard. We had the gold standard. We've had variants on that. And now we have the purely discretionary regime of our over-credentialed <coughs> central bank.